Destination Freedom. Destination Freedom, dramatizations of the great democratic traditions of the Negro people, is brought to you by Station WMAQ as a part of the pageant of history and of America's own Destination Freedom. From London to San Francisco, critics have hailed an American singer-actress as one of the greatest single entertainers of our time. Today, Destination Freedom brings you her personal story in a chapter entitled Negro Cinderella, the story of the Metro-Golden-Mayer star, Lena Horne. In the land of fairy tales, Cinderella had her dream. In the land of Brooklyn, I had mine. I inherited mine from my mother. I grew with the ache to dance, as I'd seen my actress mother do. Sing as I'd heard her sing, casual and off-handed, yet soft and warm. I inherited Cinderella dreams common to all girls, and I was anxious to find my golden slipper. And my mother's I singing nourished the dream. Loving you always. And in the evenings, my father would join me. The love that's true. Always. <laughs> <laughs> and the excitement inside me to try on the slippers of the theater was keener. And I grew, like all Brooklyn girls, hardly noticing what color I was or what race I belonged to or what difference it would make for Cinderella. Till my father was gone and left my mother singing alone. Until even she grew quiet. When she spoke one day, there was pain in her voice. <sighs> Lena, Lena. Mother, you're trembling. Let me help you. Oh. Oh. Oh, the rheumatism will pass away, the doctor said. If I can go where it's warm the year round. I heard him. So, we're leaving, girl. We're going a good way from New York and all these theaters and nightclubs and shows you love so much. How far? Oh, a long way. To Florida. Oh. Mm. You're still dreaming of being an actress. Well, I can understand. Will I ever be great, like the actresses I'll read about? That depends. Depends on what? On finding the way you've got to travel to reach greatness. What'll be my way? You'll find out. We're traveling south. You'll find out too soon, I'm afraid. <laughs> I remember the quiver that shook me at the idea of discovering how I could become what I'd been. I'd never seen a palm tree or lived where snow didn't fall. And when I stepped on the train, it was like stepping into my golden slipper. All aboard! What? Here, here, young lady. I'll handle the bags. Oh, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there we are. Now, your mother's this way, Pullman coach. Uh, right in here. Nice and comfortable. I've got a healing leg on that footstool. Now, you all can stay here comfortable until we get down to the capital. Then I'll have to be back. I didn't understand what he meant by coming back. But then the train stopped in Washington. I learned. I'm taking your bags and the other coach, ma'am. Then I'll help you. Rules. You understand, it ain't me, it's, it's them. I understand. Understand what? Come along, honey. Come on, come along. I went along to another coach with narrow seats and straight backs. I looked for an answer, but in Mother's eyes there was only pain. I sat still while the train rocked along and my mother winced. Then I couldn't be still. I went back to the Pullman we had left. <laughs> You lost something, girl? No. I was looking for better seats. Well, some of these are still empty. Your first trip south on a train? Yes, sir. Uh, why do they leave me to do the educating? What's the matter? Now, look around, gal. What do you see? People. No, no. You don't see just people. You see white people. Only white people. 
Now go on back up at the colored people's coach where you belong. It's the law of the land. My mother paid to sit up here. Will you get while the getting's good? I won't. Oh, yes, you will. Now, come on. Now, get yes. <laughs> I remember the grip as he twisted me around, dragged me through the aisle while passengers jeered and stared and laughed. A girl my age with blonde hair snickered. <laughs> the door opened. I was thrown into the Jim Crow car. Then I knew my way to the golden slippers would be rocky. I was a Negro. I was Cinderella. My stepsisters were greed and bigotry, backed by those who make profit out of prejudice. When the train rolled into Miami, where the white buildings glowed like jewels in the sunlight and palm trees waved in the warm wind, I understood when my mother said, hmm. You're looking the wrong way, honey. That's where the white folks live. The poor whites and colored walk this way. And we walked from the bright buildings and went where the ocean couldn't be seen to a crippled street, a battered boarding house, and a woeful landlady. Lord, today, you came here just in time for trouble, Mrs. Horn. You couldn't have done better if you'd made a date with trouble. What trouble? There's a race ride brewing in Miami. Colored neighborhoods expanding. Maybe they'll postpone it till you get over your ailment. Well, come on in. The riot seemed postponed. Mother warmed in the sunshine while I practiced dancing on the southern soil and tried on the leather slippers in a downtown shoe store. They didn't fit. You say this here shoe just won't fit your feet, huh, girl? It's much too small, you see? Uh, that's too bad. Maybe you got a younger sister. I'm the only girl. That'll cost you $15. But I don't want them. Look, the shoe's been on your feet. Now, how do you expect white folks to buy them after you had them on? It's the rule around here. What Negroes put on, they buy, or else. Else what? Well, I've been needing a nice, good-looking girl to cook for my old lady. You could uh, work it out. Here's your $15. Never mind. As soon as I'm well, honey... I'll take you where you can start looking for real golden slippers. As, as soon as I'm well. And I waited until one hot, sultry evening, the tinderbox between the Negro neighborhood and the walled-off white city of Miami exploded. A car drove by our house. The Klan had come to subdue the Negro quarters. The riot was on. As I was coming inside, I heard the landlady yell. Get your hand blown off, Miss Hart. Get her in. Lay it up. Lay it up. I was in. Mother bolted the door. We went upstairs and trembled in the darkness as the door shook under a pounding. They gave up before it broke. Footsteps stormed off down the street. Then all was quiet. My mother felt over my face. Oh, your face is wet. Bent down and kissed away salty tears mm -hmm. and said, Never mind, honey. You won't have to stay until I'm well. I'll stay alone. We'll meet again in Brooklyn. I'm going to send you away from here in the morning. In the morning, the Miami sun discovered the dead in the streets and the wreck shacks. I knew the way of Cinderella. Truly, my stepsisters had been on a rampage. And when my mother joined me again in Brooklyn, I was willing to take any chance to begin my search for the golden slipper. I have bad news again for you, Lena. Mother confronted me one day as I was preparing for school. You may as well know now. You'll find out as soon as you ask for car fare to school. What is it? We're penniless. And your stepfather can't find work. He's tried, but... I can try. I can quit school and look for a job. Oh, you're too young. Besides... Girls younger than I are working. What kind of work can you get? Well, I... I can dance. I can get in a chorus, maybe. Oh, child. I can. I can sing. I've practiced all your dance steps and some new ones. See? Oh, 
I did a time step and a buck and wing and all the steps I'd rehearsed since the day I discovered my legs had the gift of rhythm. Mother looked anxious and finally said, Well, you got dancing in you, all right. Mm, maybe I'm wrong in keeping you from it. Maybe you have got the stamina for the work. I haven't been deaf. I've heard you tapping all the way to Miami and back. Nothing will hold you until you see for yourself what you can do with it. We'll make the rounds of the Broadway shows. We'll see who needs a dancer. We made the rounds. I did ballet step, tap, and sang. And one evening, I auditioned for the managers of a nightclub who watched my steps and finally said, Well, all right, all right, all right. Don't knock a hole in the mahogany. Yeah, you don't have a step. How about this lamb, Mr. Charlie? Uh, ain't bad. Ain't bad at all. In fact... <laughs> <laughs> uh, that means you're in, kid. Now, uh, come on to the desk and sign your first legit contract. Huh? Well, my mother usually... Does. Mother? Uh, my daughter's underage, and I thought it would be... Underage, she says. Ain't that rich, Mr. Charlie? Look, we take him from 8 to 88. Let's sign your name right here. Well, I'd like to read Lady, it. Lady, we ain't got time for unnecessary details. Rehearsal starts in ten minutes. Is your Lena in or out? Well, I... I thought so. All right, sign right here. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Lena, you're on your way. Uh, this office is handling most of the nightclubs in town. Yeah, baby, you're on your way. I was so glad to be on my way that I asked no question. My body found it easy to learn the steps and keep the rhythm of the chorus line. Night after night, I felt I'd started my search for the golden slipper. But the work was heavy, and the pay was small, and there was a back-breaking routine to the rehearsals and demands from the club for free benefit shows. And none of the Negro chorus girls were protected by a union. And soon I became tired and sick. And Mother said, You're not dancing in that club anymore. We need the money, but... But the I manager said... Never mind what he says. I'll tell him you're quitting. She told the manager, and we learned what we were beginning to suspect. The club was run by racketeers. Uh, you call us racketeers if you like, lady. But if your daughter wants to break, it's dance here or nowhere. I'm handing in her notice. <laughs> you hear that, Mr. Charlie? Yeah, I heard every sad word of it. Lena, you've got your bags packed. Then I'm sure the gentleman can get someone else. You, you've closed the door. What are you doing? Getting you straight, lady. You can go if you want to, but the girl stays. She's not going Read to Read the her. contract. She can't quit. Contract or no contract, she's leaving. <laughs> Come on, Lena. Baby. All right, you're asking for it, lady. The girl's property at the club. Now you get out of here. Oh, Come on. on. Get on. I stood there, stunned, frightened, uh, bewildered. Now, girlie, don't be nervous. Me and Mr. Charlie here got plans for you. Much better plans. Uh, whoever it is, Jake, tell him we're busy. Uh, yeah, what is it? I've come for my daughter, Lena. Father. Buddy. If you know what's good for you, you'll go out quiet. Mr. Charlie. I've called the escorting squad. Lena, come on. We're getting out of here right now. What are you doing? Two of the club guards came in with blackjacks and threw themselves on my father. Stunned him and lifted him. All right, now throw him out. Now, girlie, do you catch on? (laughs) She's trembling like a leaf, Jake. (laughs) Uh, that makes them dance better. Say, Goyle, you ever heard of the gang? No. Uh, she comes from that backward state, Brooklyn, Mr. Charlie. Kid, have you ever heard of Murder Incorporated? Well, this is it. I say that only to impress you with the importance of cutting out the kid stuff and getting down to work without squawking about little things like wages and hours and working conditions. There ain't gonna be no strike. Uh, time for the next show, Jake? Uh, yeah. All right, kid. Go out there and dance like you never danced before. 
I danced like I'd never danced before. My legs were lead and seemed paralyzed. And when I'd made my last bow and dressed to go. Uh, it's cold outside, Gailey. Better bundle up good. If you want a job in any club in town, remember, be back tomorrow. I <laughs> have to come and get you. Good night, Gailey. I walked to the corner and found my mother waiting. Oh, mother. Never mind, honey. I know a way out. Where? There's a dear friend of mine who has a band, and he's leaving the city tonight. Noble Sissel. And I think that out of friendship, he'll take us with him. We'll come back to New York when the Union's strong enough to include it in all chorus girls, Negro as well as white. Now we've got to leave. I left New York the way I'd left Miami. We joined Noble Sissel's band, toured the North and South, appeared in theaters, auditoriums, country clubs, and dance halls. And one evening, he heard me humming. Oh, so you sing too, huh, Lena? <laughs> you call it singing? I tell you what. The band needs a soloist more than a dancer. Hereafter, you stick to singing. Thereafter, I sang blues and ballads, pop tunes and folk songs. Ethel Waters taught me to sing torch songs and to caress my lyrics softly before I let them go. And people came in crowds to listen and stayed to hear more. But there was no fairy godmother to wave the Jim Crow away. There were days my mother and I walked miles to find a restaurant which would serve us. Once we slept in a haystack because all the hotels in town were for whites only. Once we lay awake all night in a circus barracks on the outskirts of an Indiana town where signs said, no Negroes allowed. I was a sawdust jack-in-the-box, popping into view to perform, then disappearing as the lid of the box of segregation was snapped shut. Then my dreams of finding the golden slipper quietly died away. But when the band played Pittsburgh, I met a boy who said, I, I can't make your dreams of a stage career come true, baby. I've had some of my own busted, too. We've gotten to love each other, so look, I'll put it this way. Suppose we pull what's left of our dreams and get married. I like the way he put it. So we married and lived in Pittsburgh. I washed and cooked and cleaned and later cared for our two children. I got to know my Pittsburgh neighbors. They were Irish and Jewish, Polish and German, Greek and Negro. I saw that poverty knew no color line, that there were others who had stepsisters blocking them from the American dream. Soon I had to look for work again. I went to New York, and one day, tired and discouraged, I sat down in the theater. I was watching a movie, yes, and I heard someone call me. Lena. Lena. It was Charlie Anderson, Lovely. an old agent who handled singers. Lena, that's you. Mister, you're disturbing my view. Will you move? Andy? Lena, I got a job for you. Well, doing what? Singing. Will you settle your jobs in the employment office and leave me see the dead. movie for which I paid for? But I'm through singing, Charlie. No, it started yet. Listen, Charlie Barnett singers just got laryngitis. Got what? Laryngitis. Can't sing. Where's the usher? Somebody get the usher for me. Hold man. Lena, you're coming? Well, I, I don't know. I haven't sung in a long time. The audition's over at the Windsor. You're coming. Well, I don't know, Andy. Lady, lady, please make up your mind one way or the other so we can hear what Betty Grable is saying to Clark Gable. Wait till this movie's over. You don't have time. I tell you, this is your chance. Uh, I'm afraid you'll both have to step outside. People are complaining. All right. I'll go. Oh, hurry, honey. Barnett's band in rehearsal. <laughs> Winds 
Walter, the Barnett band was ripping through Redskin Rumba. And when Alita saw me, he came over. All right, boys, take five. Yeah. You, uh, Lena Horn? Oh, yes, but... You ready? Oh, no. Oh, but all right. In my solitude, you haunt me with reveries of days gone by. What do you mean you're not ready? You're terrific. You know, we've never had a Negro singer in the band before, but only squares bother about race when it comes to jazz music. Jazz is language that only those who are free can understand. In jazz, you express yourself from the rocky bottom. Get rid of the old phony notes that make it impossible for people to act like human beings. You know, it's liberation music. It's got the widest market in the world. And Lena, I like the way you put it out. The job's yours. I took the job. I was out after the golden slipper again. And fans whistled and stomped, cheered, yelled and screamed and swooned as I sang small cities and big cities, in hotels and nightclubs. But Cinderella's stepsister struck out at me in restaurants where head waiters wanted to serve the band, but not the singer. In hotels where I could be admitted to perform, but not to sleep. But I didn't quit. I met jazz authority John Hammond, and he got me to sing in Cafe Society, uptown and downtown. Cafe Society, where the people of all races and nationalities mixed and heard Negro artists for the first time. It was a far cry from the early Jim Crow clubs, and it brought to America's attention Negro artists like Pearl Primus, Hazel Scott, Art Tatum, Kenneth Spencer, and myself. And when I went to Hollywood to sing, someone from Cafe Society took me to Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer for a screen test, and the directors had a consultation, and one said, Miss Horn, uh, you're very uh, <coughs> uh, photogenic, uh, only I'm afraid you're, you're not the type we want. What type do you want? Uh, well, we, uh, we had in mind more, uh, well, more of a, uh, a Negro type. I'm a Negro. <laughs> yes, but uh, you're not quite the type, the producers say. Every Negro is a Negro type. There's no one type that'll fit a Negro or a Chinese or a Jew or an Italian. Some Negroes are dark, some are light. Some are short, some tall. We're every color on the scale. I'm a Negro type, all right. producers agreed and I began to make pictures and soon I had become what I dreamed of and I worked towards another dream of playing in movies which would portray the great stories of American life where all races mingle as they do in reality and where there's a growing bond between peoples like the one I found in an Alabama city one midnight as I was changing planes well, I'd like to give my baggage flight 107 loading in 10 minutes Flight 107, loading in 10 minutes. And I had time enough for coffee and a sandwich, and I asked the purser where the restaurant was. Now, there's a place close to the road, ma'am, the only one. I walked over to a small roadside cafe. On the cover of a magazine on the counter, my picture looked back at me. A jukebox was playing a record I'd name. I sat down on a stool and looked around. A freckle-faced boy with polishing glasses. A middle-aged woman was in the kitchen. I looked at the fly-speck menu and decided, a cup of coffee and a sandwich, please. Yes, sir? Well, what kind of sandwich? Cheese. Hurry, uh, hey. Yes, Ma? You know what you're doing? Oh, oh, y y yes, Ma? He stopped pouring my coffee, went back to polishing glasses. I waited a long minute. Neither of us said anything. I knew what had happened and why. And when his mother walked by, she said, 
I don't serve no Negroes at my front counter. Oh, Ma! Freddy, will you shut up? <laughs> I'm very tired and there's not much time. I never serve Negroes. I never will. Of course, uh, I ain't saying nothing about the kitchen. Kitchen? Come around to the kitchen. I'll see what I can do. Ma! Fred! Ma. Well, I... I guess I'm not that hungry. I got off the stool, and as I walked across the road, I remembered all the trips I'd made over the South when I first began to sing. The nights looking for a hotel that would give me room. The hungry walks from restaurants I couldn't eat in. And I felt Cinderella's stepsisters, bigotry and prejudice, were still hounding me. Hey, hey, miss! Hey, miss! The freckle-faced boy was waving the menu in his hand, and he stopped, and his eyes lit up. Ready? Come back here. Freddy? Your mother's calling you, son. Oh, I'm sorry for what Ma does. W- would you mind writing a name on the back of this menu for me? Autograph? <laughs> you're Lena Horn, ain't you? Well, Miss Horn, you're, you're the prettiest woman in the world. <laughs> Lena Horn. Freddy, will you come back here before I beat the living oh. daylights out of you? <laughs> Thank you. Y- y- yeah, Ma, I'm coming. I'm coming. His hand tightened on his menu. And he went back into the Jim Crow Cafe. The jukebox was fed a nickel. And I was singing again. I walked out into the moonlight to wait for my plane. But as I watched the freckle-faced boy sitting in the cafe, I knew there was a new generation, Negro and white, growing in the South. Unafraid, unintimidated by bigotry and race superstition, They would furnish the princes who would put the golden slippers on tomorrow's Cinderella's. You have just heard Negro Cinderella the story of the famous Metro-Golden-Mayer film star, Lena Horne. And here with a special message to our Destination Freedom audience is our Cinderella, Miss Lena Horne. Good morning, everyone. Every American girl has her own Cinderella story. It springs from the rather human need to find a way to live free from persecution and insecurity. The great American dream is in itself a Cinderella story. The great American dream which Thomas Jefferson, Crispus Attucks, John Brown, Frederick Douglass, Harriet Tubman, and hundreds of our forebearers brought closer to reality in their day must be brought to reality not in some distant future, and dim future, but in our own time. Today, this great American dream stands in danger of being a nightmare unless we who believe in the principle of equality of opportunity for all, stand behind the age-old American right to think, to work, and live in peace, free from fear and insecurity. That's why I think this magnificent air show, Destination Freedom, the only one of its kind on the air, is doing so much toward making the American dream come true, with its authentic portrayal of the human struggle and stories of the Negro people. It, like other institutions, both Chicago and national, institutions such as the DuSable Community Center, the Federation of Jewish Women, and my own union, Actors' Equity, is taking steps into the unexplored regions of human endeavor which will truly move us all towards our destination freedom. Destination Freedom, produced by Homer Heck and written by Richard Durham, is directed by Dick Lochran. Appearing as Lena Horn was Janice Kingslow. Others in the cast were Weslyn Tilden, Oscar Brown Jr., Fred Pinkard, Russ Reed, Dorothy Tate, and George Kluge. Special music was composed by Emil Soderstrom and played by Elwin Owen and Jose Bethencourt. 
And now this is Hugh Downs inviting you to be with us again next week when Destination Freedom will tell the story of Roscoe Dungey, prominent Negro editor and publisher. Portions of this program were transcribed. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.